Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg, and today Uri is going to do something special for Valentine's Day. Make a bouquet of crystal candy roses. The sugar is heated up, and it's already flavored as a peach rose, and of course a peach rose should be colored orange. So he's adding the orange food coloring and stirring it in the hot sugar. The bubbling you see is the water boiling off from the food coloring, getting rid of the water so the candy becomes hard and not sticky. So this design is going to have a clear background with a rose in the middle, and making clear candy is actually harder than it sounds. We use a couple of tricks for this, but the big one is we don't pull it and we don't trap air bubbles. So if we need anything that's opaque, we have to use white food coloring. And you may have noticed a few minutes ago, the white food coloring was added for this. And this is one color in a bouquet of roses that we released for Valentine's Day. Because what good is one rose? And they're each a different color and a different flavor. But follow on, you'll see where we're going with this. This is our candy cooling table. It's about 150 years old. We have a video on that in particular. We'll link to that at the end. And it's quickly cooling the candy from the consistency of a liquid to one of, well, a clay so we can sculpt it because we're going to be sculpting about 5,000 little roses in orange for the peach flavor. This design is one that I created a number of years ago after being given some Japanese candy that had stylized flowers in it. I thought the technique was beautiful. We usually do clear on the inside and opaque candy on the outside, and this was the inverse of that. And at that point, I'd never seen it before. So I took that concept and took my own ability to sculpt. My goal is always to make the artwork, well, pop a little bit more. And I wanted to take it from the simple geometry of the Japanese candy to something that was more fluid, like it was drawn with a pen, even though it was drawn in sugar. I think that's why I like seeing other people's work. It inspires me to push my own art form to another level. The palette of colors is assembled. Clear, which looks amber here, but will be clear at the end. A peach for the opaque elements, and an orange for the not opaque elements. And then we have a triangle of green to turn into the leaves for the rose. This is one of our most complex designs. And it's complex for something you can't see. It's temperature. This is much more picky that everything has to be at the precise temperature or things twist. You see, the actual structure of the pulled sugar, when we pull it on the hook, little air bubbles give the candy some structure. So it kind of fights the twisting. While we have some pulled sugar, we don't have nearly as much as we normally do. And because of that, it becomes more difficult to make because we have to get everything perfect temperature-wise, not just close. To ensure that the leaves go into the correct place, we suspend them in a clear matrix. And now we have to construct the rose itself, and there are two parts to the rose. There's the unopened coil of petals in the center, and then the open petals on the outside. Each has to be made independently. You can try these for yourself, or get them as a gift for somebody else for Valentine's Day, at our website, www.pd.net. There are six flavors in the assortment. Pink roses are cherry, purple or blackberry, yellow is mango, orange is peach, white is lychee, and blue, blue is raspberry. This is but one of several assortments we make, just for Valentine's Day, all available on our website. I love how roses intersect history and art. And they intersected most beautifully, in this case, with Shakespeare. Because Romeo and Juliet was set in Verona, Italy. And Verona, Italy is not just the town that's known for its peaches, but it's also known for Romeo and Juliet. Juliet uses a rose as an allegory for the fight between their two families. 
hers and Romeo's. To quote Juliet, "'Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What is a Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What is in a name? That which we call a rose, by any other name, would still smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called? Retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title? Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. The quote tells you to enjoy beauty for what it is, to enjoy life for what it is. And I'm hoping that you'll enjoy the candy for what it is. Something beautiful, and something that is both a rose, and by any other name is peach flavored. The flavor of Verona, Italy. We now have a single giant log with one rose down the middle and we have to make about 5,000 pieces. And we do this by tapering the candy. And we do that by pinching off one end of it, which becomes a unicorn dropping that we sell in the store. And then the rest gets tapered down with the slope that it makes. The next thing we do is we put it on our batch roller. This is a relatively new machine for us. It's only about 110 years old. And it's cool. Look at the candy. You can see right through it because this candy's transparent. And you can see how it twists the candy. But that doesn't affect the design at the end. It's straightened out when it's pulled from the log to rods. And then, all we have to do is cut those rods into bite-sized pieces. And the roses really look like the glasswork milliflorus. They're little jewels individually. The flavors match the color with peach, blackberry, raspberry, cherry, lychee, and mango. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. You can get our candy at www.pd.net. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and soon to be TikTok. And of course, check us out. If you ever make it to Tallahassee, we're right off I-10 at the Thomasville Road exit. We don't make candy every day, but we make it a lot. And you might be lucky enough to catch it and see us do this live for yourself. And of course, thanks to our Patreons, which you can join at patreon.com slash lofty pursuits.